I don't know what GHB is. I'm not a marine biologist and I'm not a low life. That night I was a low life, but normally I'm a high school teacher. Welcome to This Is Not Happening presents One Crazy Night. So this is what we do. Uh, we're a bunch of comedians uh, tell stories about a similar subject. So this is just One Crazy Night. Ladies and gentlemen, first it's a Harley Morrison, everybody. Let him hear it. I started a cooking show on the internet, and I don't know how to cook, and I thought that was a really irresponsible thing to do. But I did that, and... Uh, it was cool, I guess the whole vibe of, of, of wrapping things in bacon and getting drunk with your friends really works on YouTube. You know YouTube where everyone's retarded? <laughs> That's uh, where, we, where we put our show. So I'm from Montreal, Canada, and in Montreal, Canada, we kind of have Celine Dion and we have the Montreal Canadians, and now our show got really popular. Me and my buddies on the show, we started to get recognized, which is really cool. See, me and my buddies, we're sloppy, fat, dudes that never really wear the right shoes to the club that are cool enough to charm the bouncer into allowing us access to the establishment. Once Epic Meal Time happened, the internet show on our hometown started to respect us in this weird fucked up, like, you're the bacon man type of way. We got access to the clubs. And not only that, when we got in there, they would give us bottles of whiskey. Let's drink them all and let's drink them fast and let's drink them hard and let's fucking do it. Let's do it big. And I ended up outside of the club. I guess it was because I had this move where I, I cleared a table of all the drinks so I could lie down on it. And it was like, uh, like I put my hand down and I slid it all off and lied on my back. And I remember them picking me up by my arms and legs and bringing me out. And I was on the streets now and I don't know what it was. It was like 2 a.m. I'm really fucked up and I'm all you know, balloon headed because people like that I wrap things in bacon on the internet and like, you know, everyone's giving me pats on the back, you know, high fives all around. And I'm hurting now, I'm hurting. I'm like, water, water. And I'm grabbing, I'm like, water, water, water. I need it, I need it. And I get a bottle of water. Someone gives it to me. And this guy's like, I dare you to chug it. And I was so, I was like fast. I was drunk. I was so fucking fast. I was like, I dare you to chug it, motherfucker. And I knocked it back. And I was just doing it. And I, I, good at drinking water normally on, on a real life basis. I can drink water really well. That night, it was like my mutant superpower. I drank water perfectly. I was the perfect water drinker. I was doing it and like everyone was loving it. I don't know if they were loving them. I know my eyes were closed, but I felt love around me as I was doing it and I was drinking it perfectly. And the only thing that weirded me out is when I kind of burp barfed back into my mouth and I tasted the water I was drinking. I was like, weird it's weird why is it weird and I look at it and it's like milky and I was like why does it look weird and I I see all these faces all these smiling faces and I see I locate the face that gave me the water and I was like why is it it's electrolytes please let this be electrolytes <laughs> he was like GHB molly water cocaine drugs and I was I, I don't know what GHB is. I'm not a marine biologist and I'm not a low life. I'm not a low life. That night I was a low life, but normally I'm a high school teacher. I'm good. I don't drink GHB on the streets. And I drank all this GHB. I don't even know what that does. I don't know what that's supposed to do to me. I don't know what's happening. And I blacked out. And I blacked out. My eyes closed and I felt like movement. So I know, I know now what was happening was I closed my eyes and I turned my brain off and I started stomping up the street. Like, really big man, like big scary man walking, like get the fuck out of my way, there's a big man stomping down the street and he's really fucked up on, on GHB, Molly Water, all that jazz. And he's, I heard he's a high school teacher, he'll fucking eat your soul or something like that. I was, I blacked out and I woke up lying face down in the, in the middle of the busiest street in downtown Montreal and my, my buddy Dave and my buddy Tyler were like kicking me and pulling me. They're like, get up, get up. And I grabbed them and I was like, no, I fucking need this. You leave me. I need to get arrested tonight. I need that in my life. And they're kind of like dragging me away. And I'm 260 pounds. I want to get arrested, so I'm dead weight. And they're pulling me and they, they stop for a second just to grab a breath of air. And I fucking bolt so fast. I woke up the next day and... It was the sun was out and I was in a stranger's bed and my pants were on inside out and I was looking at the wall and the window and I just roll over and there's a dude there in a wheelchair with no legs and he's staring at me and there's wooden legs attached to his wheelchair 
And I don't say what happened or anything. I'm just looking at, at his legs on the wheelchair. And he was like, my name's Vlad. I'm from Russia and I moved to Oklahoma. I got my legs cut off by a train and Oprah gave me these wooden legs and I outgrew them. I'm like, yeah, Oprah, okay. Fuck, talking about Oprah. Why are my pants on inside out? Why, who are you, Russian man? Like, I'm so weirded out right now. I'm like, I'm gonna head out of here. And I, as I go out, I guess it's his roommate walks in. As big as me, but like, fit. Like, for real, the fastest runner, I bet. And this guy comes in, he's like, sup, dog? I'm Point Man. And I'm like, what's up, Point Man? He's like, why don't you grab a seat over there? And I sit down, and I'm sitting with Point Man and Vlad the Russian with no legs. And I'm sitting there, and he, the first thing he does, he pulls out these documents and a pen, and he slides it across the table. And he's like, let me tell you something about this idea I got called Tit Pillows. And this is his words, not mine. This is his pitch. I would have pitched Tit Pillows way better, but this is what he told me. He was like, so you basically collaborate with a plastic surgeon that specializes in breast reduction. You keep the titty fat. We're going to put them in pillows and in various shapes and sizes, brown tits, Asian tits, white tits, whatever you want, bro. He was like, you're going uh, to be the spokesperson. And at this moment, I swear to God, I noticed like crossbow on the wall and like a knife collection. And I'm like, dude, I'm the fucking spokesperson. <laughs> like, pen, I'm signing a document now. Like, why am I signing a document? I don't know what time it is, it's the next day. Where's my team, you know? But the point man owns my soul, basically. And uh, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna head out. And point man's like, whoa, before you go, pulls out Perfect Strangers season one. <laughs> Makes me watch it all. All Perfect Strangers season one. I sit down and I watch the entire thing with him. I'm like, I got so much fucking bulky in Perfect Strangers, enough for four lifetimes that the moral of the story is fuck my friends. If I say I need to get arrested, I need that in my life, you leave me alone. You let me stay there and you let me get arrested because I don't, I don't need this shit. Hey, why don't you do like like so that this YouTube clip gets better views and subscribe so you can see next week's story. And don't forget to leave a comment. I command.